Mizuma TV back with another video. All right, guys, shout out to Boxing News for this article that I had just uh, found. And according to Max Kellum and someone who had been commentating the fight between Triple G and Daniel Jacobs, which had been a real close competitive fight. Me personally, I had Daniel Jacobs winning it. I watched it a second time. Uh, pretty much the same results that I had the first time. I had Daniel Jacobs winning it. But I can't get mad if you believe that Triple G had won the fight. It was a close competitive fight. And um, either side is arguable based upon how you uh, come about with the argument. You know what I'm saying? If it's a logical argument, then you can't even debate it because it was that close of a fight. Now... Our guest Max Kellerman had been doing an interview, and um, he had not insinuated, but he had basically said that Triple G is he may be getting old, you know. And despite how Triple G face looked, uh, despite how young he is, he may I mean not that he is uh, how old he looks, you know. He's thirty four years old, you know. And um, when you look at the sport of boxing, when you're 34, that's usually when you're on your way out in the sport of boxing. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody's like Holyfield. Not everybody's like Floyd, where they could uh, beat current or former world champions at an old age, you know, at an older age, like 38, 39, 40. b -Hot was in his 50s, was champion, you know what I'm saying? So not everybody goes out of the sport that way. A lot of people go out... Um, they, they go outside of their prime around that age that Triple G is in right now. And um, when he said that, that kind of took me off guard because, like, just a year previous to this, when he was when he knocked out Willie Monroe and when he was running through Lemieux, nobody had gave a um, gave the age excuse that while he was getting hit by Willie Monroe, you know. Um they were looking at him as this invincible middleweight champion, you know what I'm saying? And now that he had faced a true legitimate middleweight in Daniel Jacobs, not saying that Willie Monroe, even though he came up for 154, and David Lemieux, who usually struggles to make 160, it has shown in the past, uh, I'm not saying that they aren't legitimate middleweights, because they may be, but what I'm saying is, Daniel Jacobs is the is clearly the best fighter on Triple G's resume. And the fact that he had actually struggled with the best fighter in his resume, and not only on his resume, in the sport of boxing, he's one of the top middleweights. The fact that he struggled with that, they should not use age as an excuse. Triple G is undefeated. Now he's 37-0 with 33 knockouts. He wasn't able to get the job done with Daniel Jacobs. He was not able to stop him. He was not able to hurt him from what I've seen. And um, although he had dropped him, it had seemed as if it was a flash knockdown. Daniel Jacobs did not really look hurt. You know what I'm saying? Some jabs looked like they have caught uh, Jacobs' attention, but he said that he didn't really know what the uh, talk was about with the power because he really didn't feel it at any points. It was even willing to exchange with Triple G at some points in the fight, you know? So... Um, he struggles with Jacobs, and now they're using age as an excuse. And it makes me wonder if uh, Triple G faces Canelo, and Canelo deals with him um, in a positive way and actually comes up with the victory. Well, they use age as an excuse. Because, you know, um, I feel like Triple G didn't really start popping, like really, really was known until he fought that boy Rubio. And that wasn't that long ago. From I think that was like 2014, 2015, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think that's when uh, he had fought Rubio. And a lot of people were the Kazakh Thunder and, you know, all this crazy shit about him. I feel like he really wasn't getting that much exposure until that time frame. Hardcore boxing fans may have known about Triple G. I've known about Triple G. My dad put me on with Triple G. He told me about him. And, um... Or I've known about him, but like the typical person in the household who doesn't really follow the sport of boxing had no clue of Triple G. And that's pretty much facts, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, with that being said, I mean, he was he, he was still in his 30s when he fought Rubio. He looked like he had to be at least 32, 31, going, maybe even 33. I'm not even sure, you know. I think he's turning 35 this year, if I'm not mistaken. And, um... The fact that they're using this um, excuse with Triple G's age to justify him struggling with Danny Jacobs is absolutely ridiculous. You know, they even when Kell Brook was was uh, having his little moments in his fight against Triple G, they didn't use uh, age as an excuse when uh, 
Kell Brook had landed that nasty uppercut that popped Triple Z's neck back and, and lifted him off his feet a little bit. You know, they wasn't using age as an excuse, and that was last year. That was last year, so I don't understand why they're trying to come up with this excuse with Triple G's age. That's not legitimate. That The guy is still undefeated. It's not like you're over here struggling with bums. Trip, Daniel Jacobs is far from a bum. You know what I'm saying? Kell Brook is far from a bum. David Lemieux is far from a bum. You know what I'm saying? So they, they need to stop it with the fucking... Oh, yeah, and with Curtis Stevens was laying to his little punches on Triple G, too. Nobody was saying age because he was still in his 30s when that shit happened. So I don't understand what these motherfuckers is talking about. They need to stop using that age excuse. That's not legitimate. And if Canelo defeats Triple G, I don't want to hear nothing about an age excuse. And I guarantee it will happen. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he didn't fight Triple G last year. Like, he took a lot of punishment in between, uh, you know. Like, he took punishment in between fights that all of a sudden Triple G is not Triple G anymore, you know? Triple G didn't Triple G showed the same style that he brings to all of his fights against Jacobs. That come forward, attempt to cut off the ring, throw his little power punches, you know. It's just he he not, I'm not gonna say exposed, but like he's shown that he's not as uh Invincible as everybody believes he is. He's the complete opposite. He's definitely, he could definitely be beat, just like Mayweather has said in the past, just like Canelo said that Triple G isn't what everybody thinks he is. You know, he they see right through it, and I do as well. And now that the fact that HBO can't really sell him as this invincible fighter because he had gotten exposed on separate occasions back to back with Kell Brook, uh, not back to back. Wait, did he? F- he fought Dominique Wade and then Kell Brook, or did he fight Kell Brook and then? But regardless, you know, he uh he had gotten exposed on HBO back to back with Kell Brook and Daniel Jacobs. So now they can't sell him as this invincible fighter anymore. So they're gonna start making excuses for him, you know. But it is what it is, man. That's just what I think about it. Um, don't use his age as an excuse. That's not legitimate. And that shit, that shit not flying with me or anybody else who knows the sport of boxing. This is Mazuma TV. Y'all let me know what y'all think, and I'm out.